Are you currently on furlough and are worried that you're going to be made redundant? Do you think there's something that your employer isn't telling you? Do you think you'll have a job to go back to at the end of all this? Well, in this video, I'm going to try and do my best to answer those questions for you. So if you haven't seen the channel before, we do videos aimed at helping employees by explaining things in simple terms. Whereas a lot of the channels you might see online that do similar kind of stuff, it's very scripted, it's very wooden, and it's not very authentic. We try to read between the lines to give you the real scope of what's actually going on and answer the common questions for you. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And at the end of the video, if you like this one, do click the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us on our other social media channels. I'm gonna put the links up here on the screen. So let's try to paint a little bit of a picture. You're on furlough like the 9 million or so other people and all you see on news media, on your phone, on TV, is about mass redundancies on the horizon. You're starting to see a few people may even made redundant. You might even know people that are losing their jobs that have been made redundant, companies going under, and you're worried whether that's gonna be you next. Firstly, there are a few reliable indicators to look out for. Some are more obvious than others though. One quick thing to add is that most tabloid newspapers and media aren't exactly gonna give you the most reliable sources of information. They're a bit like the devil on your shoulder. The best way of answering your concerns are by way of rational indicators rather than the doom promoters. So the first indicator that I keep an eye out for is that if you do a job where you and your colleagues have all been furloughed or a good proportion of you have been furloughed, but some of the colleagues who do the same job as you in the same department as you, they've been brought back to work and taken off a of furlough and you haven't, that's a big red flag I'd be taking notice of. But the thing that I would point out that would be even more concerning is that if your line manager or the powers that be who have decided whether you're on furlough or not haven't given you any updates or any communication whatsoever, that would be very concerning indeed. Companies will always use their preferred resources in the first instance. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you will be made redundant, but I would certainly be keeping an eye out for it. And unfortunately, this preferred resource doesn't necessarily come down to track record or loyalty. It can come down to what they need at that particular point. So for example, if you're 64 years old but have an ongoing health condition and you've got colleagues that can do the same job as you that are 20 years younger, let's just be honest about it. I understand that ageism and discrimination isn't meant to have a part to play in any company these days, but under redundancy situations, common sense dictates that you're probably not gonna to be top of the list. You could have given them 25 years of your life. You could have been their best employee five years ago. But unfortunately, this is the way things work and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That would be something that they would need to take into account whether they admit that or not. In the real world, companies have to make some tough decisions. They have to make decisions for company survival. And at times like these, it's exactly the decisions that many company directors are having to make. And despite what you see on programs like The Apprentice, where they enjoy firing people and they make a big show of it, in the real world, nobody wants to make someone redundant. There's no pleasure in that. Another indicator to keep an eye out for is your company's market position and their financial situation. So by market position, I'm talking about what industry your company operate in. So for example, a travel operator who specialize in mass gatherings abroad, they're probably gonna struggle and they're gonna struggle for some time. But on the other hand, if it's a local barber shop, unless I'm your customer, they're probably gonna be all right. Departments and role specialisms are also a good indicator. Companies tend to organize these into primary, secondary, and tertiary functions dependent on their importance to the business. So for example, car dealers are always gonna need maintenance technicians. Cars are always gonna break down, they're always gonna need fixing. But a marketing department specializing in luxury car fleet sales, well, that's probably gonna take more of a hit. Another indicator to keep an eye out for is how your employer has handled redundancies historically. In the past, has your employer made redundancies during a recession? And what pattern did that follow? After all, history has a habit of repeating itself. I'd then consider your relationship with the redundancy decision maker. Did they like you? Were you on good terms? Do you get invited round for Christmas dinner? On the other hand, if every time they asked you to do them a favor, your answer was, yeah, not doing that, not part of my job description. Yeah, that could come back to haunt you. I'm not saying become a bootlicker, but it's always handy to have friends in high places. The final indicator is there's always those roles that are gonna be high risk regardless of what company you're in. At risk jobs typically are things like middle managers or any type of job which just doesn't really need to be done. Things like R&D, for example. Yes, it's good to be done, but 
Under normal circumstances, the company will still function without it. If you're in a role that can be easily replaced or easily molded or easily taken on under someone else's job function, then that's a good indicator that your job role could very well be at risk. I'd also add to that anyone on an inflexible shift pan. So for example, if you can only work weekends or Tuesday and Friday afternoons, that can be easily molded into someone else's job function. They don't necessarily need that. And by having you on board in the nicest way, your shift pattern to meet it is more an inconvenience to them than a convenience. So it's an easy excuse to move you on. So with that, that pretty much sums up the video. I hope I've answered your questions today so you know where you stand. I know I haven't sugarcoated anything, but the idea of the channel is to just be real about stuff and give you honest answers. If you like the video today, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon so you won't miss any one of our videos either.